Let me wait while I cue these. Yes, we are. David Lake and I are looking to be joined. So do me a favor. Hit subscribe underneath you. Hit subscribe right now. Go hit subscribe. And then uh, if, you, if you're news savvy and, and you're good at speaking and you have something to say and you're at least liberty minded, let us know. Media Speaks is looking to add a third member. Uh, Thehill.com. This was interesting news, friends. Trump. It, Christianity is under siege. Um, Trump is right about most things, and I think that's what alarms people the most, is that it becomes very clear that, I'm going to adjust this camera, it becomes very clear that Trump is right about so many different things that the media has to slander him in ways to say that he is uh, racist or that he is uh, bigoted or some ridiculous nonsense like that, which isn't true at all. Uh, the truth is, Trump is wrong on very few things. Uh, his opinion of Snowden is one of them. Snowden is a hero. But he's right about this. You, can, you can't make fun of Muslims, but you can slander Christianity, right? Uh, I was I roped into watching Ted, the, the movie about the teddy bear. And it was fine. It was funny. But do you ever notice, even in a simple movie, attack on God, attack on God, everywhere you go. And I'm not saying I'm this great moral person, because I, I'm not, and that, that needs to be set up front. But this is something different. This is actually an attack on Christians. You see it everywhere. And The Hill has it summed up here. Political made fun of it, but that's because, uh, you know, again, political doesn't understand the importance of saying Merry Christmas, for instance, which is, I mentioned, because it's in here. GOP presidential front runner Donald Trump touted his faith at Liberty University on Monday, telling his conservative college that Christians have to band together because their religion is under siege. And I agree. We're going to protect Christianity, he said. If you look at what's going on throughout the world, Christianity is under siege. Trump pointed to targeting of Christians by terrorist groups in Syria and urge Christians to work together to use their power within the United States to enact change. He added that, I'm Protestant and I'm very proud of that, Presbyterian to be exact, but bad things are happening, very bad things are happening. The speech comes on Martin Luther King Jr. Day and Trump dedicated what he called the record-breaking crowd to the civil rights leader. And again, Politico had to slander him for that and laugh at him for that. Uh, when he is obviously not racist, uh, his spokesperson, I forget her name, but she's a goddess. She's just beautiful. She's definitely not white. I have a feeling there's going to be lots of people of lots of color and ethnicities on the Donald Trump team, particularly when it comes cabinet time. Mark my words. Um, the speech could give Trump a chance to strengthen his outreach to evangelical voters, whom he said he's doing great with in Iowa. Uh, he said he wants to win Iowa, obviously. Um, it's, he's narrowly leading, uh, currently. He got a warm introduction from Jerry Falwell Jr. I can take or leave him, but uh, he is right here. He caught him a breath of fresh air and says that he loves the country more than anything. And I do believe that wholeheartedly about Trump. I really do. Uh, Trump, caught, Trump caught some flack for calling 2 Cor Corinthians 2 Corinthians. You know what? I think some churches do that. I don't think that was a misspeak. Um, he added that if he's elected president, we're going to see Merry Christmas in department stores. I have friends who aren't Christian. They like to say Merry Christmas, which is good. Um, he's absolutely right on this, and you're not allowed to talk about it, just like you're not allowed to talk about people celebrating on 9-11. And you want to know what's hilarious to me about that? I mean, like, all-out, mind-blowing, hilarious to me. I remember watching TV and seeing Muslims celebrating the fall 
of the World Trade Center in America. I remember that. I was assuming it was common knowledge. He says it, and suddenly it's like the whole world goes on fire over it or something, and it doesn't make it absolutely happen. Well, this is New York Post. New Jersey police captain says some Muslims did celebrate on 9-11. They did it on rooftops and street parties until they were broken up by the cops, a new report said on Monday. There were at least two celebrations, and likely more, with men shouting Allah Akbar and women chanting in Arabic, New Jersey reported. Yes, I remember. I had some bonehead in the comment line ask me if I recorded it. Why in the hell would I just record the news for no reason? You don't really, didn't really see it. I did really see it. Some men were dancing, some held kids on their shoulders, said retired Jersey City Police Captain Peter Gallagher, who responded to the scene after numerous calls came in to 911 from outraged residents. Who also saw it? Who weren't hallucinating, boneheads? The women were shouting in Arabic and keening in the high-pitched wail of Arabic fashion. They were told to go back to their apartments since a crowd of non-Muslims were gathering on the sidewalk below, and we feared for their safety. Gallagher said he cleared a rooftop celebration of up to 30 people at 6 Tanel Avenue, a four-story apartment building in view of Lower Manhattan after the second-floor tower fell. There is where it happened for one. You have an actual address. That's why you tune into the correct views. Another witness said she saw a celebration on John F. Kennedy Boulevard, the main thoroughfare to the thoroughfare of the city. Another place. When I saw they were happy, I was pissed, said Ron Wright, 56, who was not hallucinating either. Who also heard cheers of Allah Akbar, meaning God is great, in Arabic, and the crowd about 20 people that morning. Residents also placed numerous 911 calls complaining about Muslims partying on a rooftop at a third location. Three cops were told to that website. So, told the website. Let me ask you something. Is it unreasonable here to think we could hit a thousand or more people, just as Donald Trump said? He created a storm of controversy when he said that they celebrated the attacks of the Twin Towers, but NewJersey.com said Gallagher, described by former colleagues as a respected professional, and other witnesses confirmed the celebration, if not their size. And the FBI took several residents of the building where Gallagher was in custody in the following days, according to the neighbors and a story at the time in the Star-Ledger, Though it was unclear if they were ever charged with a crime, some of them had their hands in the air and they were happy. They didn't get arrested, so there are no records for this, and over time what has happened is it has become urban legend, but it is in fact true. Uh, thankfully, we have the First Amendment in this country, so you are allowed to be a human scumbag and celebrate when the World Trade Center falls on people. So there isn't a record because they weren't arrested. They didn't get a record for it. So tired of that. So I'm glad we got the air cleared on that. You notice I'm wearing my Walmart shirt. Oh yeah, why? Some of the best news I have ever heard. Now I understand this is going to cost 180 jobs, but there's going to be other stores that open up to replace this, and those 180 people will most likely end up working there. Um, Walmart's a cancer. Walmart makes it so that the welfare uh, state in this country grows by leaps and bounds because of how little they pay. We all know this. Well, this is wonderful news. Just pure wonderful news. DJ Journal. Walmart closures. Yes, it's going to impact 180 jobs, but like I said, there's going to be a, uh, a store, but hopefully something local, something organic, will open in its place. Tupelo, uh, Walmart Stores, Inc. will close six Walmart Express stores in North Mississippi. The company said it will offer those employees jobs elsewhere if available. Our goal is to s place as many associates as possible who would like to continue with the company at other nearby locations, said company spokesman Ann Hatfield. We will be giving impacted associates priority for open positions at nearby stores. 
They're opening a 45,000 square foot neighborhood market uh, later this year in uh, Tupelo. And then it will employ 60 to 70 right there. But the store closures are part of a plan that was announced Friday, which said it is shuttering 154 stores in the U.S. and 115 outside of the country. Do you know how wonderful that is? I'm sorry. They are a dreadful company. They have put... They will go to an area, find out what sells well in that area, and then do their best to go ahead and undercut them, knowing that Walmart can afford to lose money indefinitely until the other people move. Then Walmart raises the rates way above what was even hinted at before and calls it a deal. They pay so little that their welfare rolls are through the absolute roof. Walmart is a terrible, terrible company. And I could not be more happy to be able to tell you that story. They are closing hundreds of stores. And I say, good riddance, good gone, we will not miss you. We hate you, Walmart. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Tumblr. Are you on Tumblr? You're probably not. Nobody is. I get, like, no traffic here. Do me a favor. Go to Tumblr. Also, um, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Mike McLaughlin is a writer. He does political rantings and uh, fictional stories, vampire tales. You're going to want to go. Let him know you heard about his work from The Correct Views. You'll probably get a treasure trove of things to read. Mike McLaughlin. Express.co.uk One of the only times that I will ever agree with Hillary Clinton. Aliens may have visited shop. Hillary Clinton claims as she vows to open the UFO cover-up. She looks like an alien. Look at that. They're on fact cam. That's hilarious. Um, some people think that aliens are nothing more than demons. Now, I don't know if this is true. But if it is, there's absolutely nobody that could get to the bottom of demonology better than Hillary. Uh, <laughs> the Democratic candidate who there is in no way in seven hells that I will ever, ever vote for her, even if she promises to get me an interview with an alien on the show with a million dollar contract, wants to open up on what is happening at the mysterious Area 51 military base in Nevada where UFO conspiracists believe evidence on alien technology is hidden away. Well, most of it was in hard copies, so if they haven't got it in a digital format in the original hard copies either moved or burnt by now, it's not like she's going on a huge limb here. They've had how many years to cover anything up? Again, I'm not saying I believe in it, but I, if I had to be asked if we were visited by something that wasn't human, yes, I believe we were. Can I prove it? No, but it's a bigger leap of faith to believe that we weren't when you look at the facts. Clinton claimed that she could get to the bottom once and for all of the questions and controversy over what the U.S. government does or does not know about the mysterious subject. Yeah, with her email server in her bathroom... For years, conspiracy theorists and UFOologists have claimed that various governments have evidence of alien visitations and that they have been withheld from the public amid fears over the potential impact on religion and the rule of law. It would not affect my religion at all. Um, it wouldn't affect my religion if the world was flat, which I don't believe it is, but it wouldn't affect my opinion if the world was flat. It wouldn't affect my opinion if aliens landed on this flat world. Somebody created it. I don't care if God made it round or flat. I don't care if he only made people or if he made people and aliens. Somebody made them. So it wouldn't have any effect on religion at all. I'm very sick of hearing that argument. Clinton has long had the support of the UFO movement for previously showing more than a passing interest in the topic. But now she has cemented her stance on the view no one... So no one among the so-called UFO disclosure movement can be in any doubt when they go to the ballot box. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, she's grabbing at straws here. 
Responding to questions about UFOs from a reporter during an election interview in New Hampshire, she said, yes, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Clinton even admitted that she realizes Earth may have actually been visited by extraterrestrials, and she went on to say that she would try to set up a task force to investigate the goings-on at Area 51. She would try. Yeah, she'd only be president. Oh, terrible person. Lying? God, I hate lies. Clinton and husband, former President Bill Clinton, have allegedly tried to force disclosure of UFO files before. But even when the latter was in the White House, it did not fully happen. Well, he couldn't get it done. So let's remember the Clinton family as the family that couldn't get the information out the first time, and yet she wants you to trust her and trust her this time to do it. You'd have to be an idiot. Bill Clinton allegedly met billionaire Lawrence Rockefeller at his ranch in Wyoming in 95, where they held discussions on the Rockefeller Initiative uh, to secure and release the files. In 07, Hillary Clinton acknowledged that among the top freedom of information requests her husband received were related to UFOs. Clinton once in, Bill Clinton admitted that while president, he did investigate claims about Area 51 and said those stealth technology was uh, developed there. There were no aliens. So, if her husband already got to the bottom of it, then what is it she thinks she's going to do? She's just going to say what he already said. Uh, Podesta, Mr. Podesta made her pledge that they're going to get some more information out on Area 51. Does a pledge from Hillary Clinton mean anything to you? Because it doesn't to me. And friends, that brings us to the Dumdies. There's more than one. <laughs> the Dumdies 2 of the day. Those of you who don't know, we do the Dumps Cap of the month. Once a month, every month. And I need you watching this to go to the last Dumps Cap of the month. which is the 25th. And you better hurry up, because right now I don't have a lot of votes, and someone's going to win some really nice stuff. I'm telling you now, they really are. Um, first dumdy of the day, Alan Salazar, Marine Corps, ordered to make job titles gender neutral. If you have a penis, you are a male. If you have a vagina, you are a female. If you cannot even get that right, then maybe you shouldn't be in the armed forces. Just a thought. The U.S. Marine Corps is under orders to integrate both male and female recruits at boot camp training and must alter job titles to adapt to a more gentle, neutral tone by April. Aww. The mandate announced in a January 1st memo from Navy Secretary Ray Mabus to the Commandant of the Marine Corps asks the Department to submit a detailed implementation and plan to address the gender integration of officer and enlisted basic training. In his submission, identify specifically where if where our training is already integrated and where it is separate and what specific steps you need to fully integrate. They are to eliminate the word man wherever possible, and to achieve full integration, mirroring even more closely the nation we defend, it's an opportunity to update the position titles and descriptions. Female Marine recruits have traditionally undergone segregated training, but now they don't want names like infantry men, rifle men, midship men. Dumb! Learn what sex you are, or at least stay the hell out of the armed forces! I'm so sick of PC swines. Dress like a girl if you want. I don't care! Quit telling us you are a girl, bonehead! Politico.com, one of the worst sites on the internet. Um, State Department counts bringing peace to Syria as a 2015 win. 
There is a mass exodus from Syria such as we have never seen. Millions of immigrants are destroying the culture of Europe even as we speak. And that is what they call peace. It, what they did was an accomplishment. The State Department is counting bringing peace to Syria as one of its wins in 2015. There was no peace in Syria in 2015. Have you ever heard of ISIS? The boastful recap from the State Department's, of the State Department's accomplishments, excuse me, written by spokesman John Kirby, includes the bold subheadline of bringing peace, security to Syria, above a more modest entry, taking the U.S. aid to those affected by the country's turmoil in the U.S. It's a push for political transition from Bashar Assad, who they keep saying gassed his own people, though we have no proof to that whatsoever. While Secretary of Hate John Kerry has played an integral role in Syrian peace talks, the country remains embroiled in a nasty civil war and terrorized by Islamic State. The United States and many members of the international community have stepped up to the aid of Syrian people during their time of need. The United States has, held the, has led the world in humanitarian aid contributions since the crisis began. That is true, but that's not what he said we did. He wrote that the Syrians have bore the heavy load, but that under Kerry's stewardship, the United Nations passed a U.S.-sponsored resolution to create a roadmap for Syria moving forward. So creating the roadmap must have been the great win. The apparent declaration of a win echoes comments from President Barack Obama, who has been heavily criticized for calling the ISIS state the JV team in January, and uh, calling them contained in January of 2014. Yeah, they're contained, all right. Contained so much that they're cutting off heads. And Kirby also explicitly touched on the Islamic State, also called ISIL, saying that the U.S. is winning the fight against violent extremists. Yeah, by clearing Syria. Friends, that has to be one of the dumbest things I've ever brought you on The Correct Views, and that's why it's the dumdy of the day. Uh, friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. Please donate to me if you can. The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. I'll send, tell you where to send it. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. I've got three-point lighting, got fat cam, got the cords that hook it up, got the laptop, got hours of looking stuff up and uh, getting to the root of what The Correct Views are so that I can bring them to you. So do me a favor. Please donate if you can. And remember, change transportation if you're within about a 50-mile radius of downtown Canton. Um, if you're going to go anywhere, call them. If you want to call somebody else first to get a price and then call them, they'll match it and beat it. Let them know you heard about it from uh, the correct views, and you'll get an even bigger discount. Good night, friends. God bless.